right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2001 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabrio. Behind me is a 3.6 liter flat six and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here 911 Cabrio for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm down here in Florida. Of course, you gotta drop the top. And the second reason is the fact that I love Porsches. I love the 996 generation. And so, let's spend a little bit of time with it. But before we get on with the rest of the video, I have a website, zachpradle.com, if you'd like to check it out, where you can read my blog for behind the scenes, posting about what I'm filming that week. I also have merch, and you can submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me on my website. So please go check it out. That helps out the channel and helps keep sponsor ads away from my channel. Let's get back to that 3.6 liter flat six, making about 300 horsepower. It's not anything really too crazy. However, there were tons of different trim levels and engine options for the 996, so not to worry. The Carrera means that it's pretty much a base model. Rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive like some other 996s were. It is not turbo like some 996s were. And it's not track built. This is for fun in the sun and that's exactly what I'm using it for today. And it is a flat six. It's a six cylinder, meaning it has plenty of torque. It's very fun to drive, very fun to rev out. The pistons are horizontally opposed. It sits low in the car, gives it a lower center of gravity and the 911s are rear engined, bringing the weight distribution towards the back, which is a signature of the 911. The wind is in my hair, the wind is in my hair, and I'm driving a Porsche. Yeah, you get that growl from that flat six. Ugh, yeah. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. I love that it's rear engine too, because you get all those sweet sounds right in your ear, not only the exhaust note, but you get that induction noise right over your shoulder as well. There's something beautiful about that. If you need proof of a God, it's in the back of a Porsche. Like I said, paired to that flat six is a six speed manual transmission. I like it, it is a little bit stiff. Shifting it here, shifting it there, shifting it everywhere, a little stiff, not gonna lie. However, the clutch feels good, and at the end of the day, it all feels good. It just isn't as friendly or welcoming as some of its Japanese counterparts. Last but not least, like I said, this is not the 4S, so it is rear wheel drive. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have five gauges. On the far left is my battery voltage, then I have my speedometer, then I have my tachometer right in the center where every tachometer belongs, I love that. Then I have coolant temperature and fuel and my oil pressure to the far right. The steering wheel doesn't have any obvious buttons on it. Now I do have selectors around the back for like headlights, enter and select, as well as my cruise control. Off to the left, I have my headlight switches and on the door, I just have my get in, get out lever, also known as the door handle. Don't know why I called it that, to be honest. Moving into the center, I do have a hazard switch up top and my climate control vents, which I really, really like. Very 2000s, but of course this is a 2000s car, so it fits the bill. Then I do have a touchscreen Apple CarPlay's radio. This is not original to this 911. Obviously they didn't have that technology in 2001. However, Porsche has made this kit available. So this is an official Porsche 911 Apple CarPlay retrofit kit. It plugs right into your 996 or 986 boxer and boom, you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This is such a cool option that Porsche offers to sort of retrofit their car with these fantastic features. You guys know I love Apple CarPlay and now you can have it in your 996. Very, very cool. They rolled that out last year or so and it's definitely cool to see. Down below that infotainment system, I do have my climate controls, very basic, nothing really 
to write home about here. Down below the climate controls, I do have heated seats. Very nice option. And then I have the shifter. The shifter is tall but skinny, like a couple of kids I went to high school with. And it has this carbon fiber all over it. I love that. And it has a little Porsche badge down at the bottom of the shifter. Really, really love that as well. And I don't have any cup holders, so the 2001 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabrio fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Moving on to the center console, I have the handbrake that says Porsche as well, finished in the same carbon fiber, and I have the window switches. Because this is a convertible, they tend to put convertible window switches down in the center, and. That's no different here for the 911 Carrera Cabrio. I also get an ashtray and a little locking center console. So if you spend a day at the beach, you don't have to fully put the top back up. Speaking of which, we'll talk about the top later on, but the seats are nice and comfortable. They are heated and they are memory. Those memory controls are found down by my left thigh. And I really, really like that. Overall, I really like this car, but I like the seats a lot too. And speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So I guess let's go do a back seat review. All right, so getting in the back of the 911 Cabrio um, is not going to be an easy task. Ugh. Needless to say, I don't fit back here, um, but this is the first 911 I've sat in the back seat of, so I guess there's a first for everything. Not pleasant, not pleasant at all. Let's talk about the frunk, and then we'll talk about the looks. Something that was brought to my attention after filming this backseat review was the fact that the owner, Matt, does have young children, and that's why he actually chose the 911 over the Boxer, because the Boxer actually doesn't have back seats, while the 911 does. His kids are under the age of 10, and they fit back there very, very comfortably. So, if you do have young kids, or if you want back seats at all, you do have to go with the 911 and not the Boxer. Alright, so coming around the front of the 911 Cabrio... You still have to pop the hood because this is a frunk. You actually get plenty of space up in the front of the 911. This is your spare tire. You have some like disc players and things like that from the 2000s. This is actually the box from the new Apple CarPlay head unit. So really nice box that Porsche gives you because um, obviously that's modern Porsche and they have more money. So very, very nice there. But you do get the frunk. That's kind of a signature of the 911 because it is rear engine. You get this nice front trunk, which is really, really cool. And before we talk about the looks, let's talk about the top. There's something nice about it. It is a power top. But what happens if I've left the top up all day and I want it down, but I haven't driven the car yet? Now, luckily, there's a way to fix that. If you put the key into the door and push it towards the front of the vehicle to the left, it'll start doing its jiggy little thing. Simple as that. It also works the other way. You could hold the key off to the right. And there you go. Now we gotta talk about the looks. This is finished in guards red. It is beautiful. Like I said, this only has 35,000 miles on it, and it just looks great. People don't really like the egg yolk 911 headlights. I do, because when I grew up, this was the cool 911 to have. This car was also designed by two guys, one of which was responsible for designing the E36 for BMW, and the other was responsible for the Carrera GT. Porsche Cayenne, BMW Z1, and other sorts like that. So they knew what they were doing for sure. And I just, I love the front end, I love the rear end, I love it all. But now we gotta get to my final thoughts here on the 2001 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabrio. Well, there are some things I would change, or I guess things I just don't generally like. For instance, the actual shifting feel isn't on par with what I would like. I wish it was, I don't know, a little bit looser, a little bit less resistance going into the gates, a little bit clickier, if that makes sense. I wish that the flat six had a little bit more power at the low end. At the low end, it's pretty much a dog. But once you get up there, you forget all about that. And that's why I love the 911. I really, really do. Something you also have to remember about this era of Porsche is that Porsche was dead broke in the 90s. And yes, this is a 2001, but come on, this was designed in the 90s. They didn't have any money. And so with that frame of mind, they made a pretty dang good car for pinching pennies. 
yes, some of the plastics in here don't age really well. This car, obviously low mileage, it's fine, but I've seen others where it doesn't share that same story. The plastics are cheap and the shifter isn't perfect, but for a budget build, the Germans knew what they were doing at least a little bit. I don't know, I really like this generation. The 996 will always go down as my favorite generation of the Porsche 911. And that is reinforced by this car. Is it perfect? No, but not every car is. And I can't complain. I'm in Florida in a Porsche with the top down. And somehow I've stumbled into a construction zone. I don't know how I did that. I'm not from here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Matt for letting me take out his 911. I'm reviewing a bunch of his cars down here in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. Please go check out his Instagram and info that's down in the description below. Send him a message, tell him thank you for all the cool cars because these are really, really cool. And I'm very appreciative of this experience, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.